Okay, hello and welcome everyone. I am Ducky O'Brien. And today we'll be going over Chronicles of Tal Dun The Remainder. Chronicles of Tal Dun The Remainder was developed and published by Square Weasel Studio. And it was released onto the PC on March 23rd, 2022, with the MSRP of $19.99. Alright, why don't we continue on? This is a visual novel of sorts. I wouldn't say visual novel per se. It feels more like a novel novel, but... Okay, I am still recording on my... Laptop. Let me make sure that I started. <laughs> okay, I did. Yeah, it's kind of annoying because I can't monitor my own... Mic and I'm using like earbuds and my laptop audio. Whatever, it, it is what it is. Okay, so I got this game uh, in my email, and apparently it's made by a couple from Croatia, which is cool. I know a couple of people in Croatia. So I was like, that's dope. I'll cover any game if you send me a key that's redeemable on any store front that I trust. I will cover the game, so... There we go. For the first time in many seasons, the waves and the wind were the only voices singing farewells to his truthful. I waited. I waited, tension crawling up my throat until the colors of the sky changed. Clouds stifled the light, drops of wetness fell, pelting the ground. Pressing my lips together, I stood up. Why is he so quiet? Rain was pouring down, soaking through me, wind ripped at my clothes. Thick, warm red. A sick, sweet scent filled my nostrils, I dared to lick. Metallic, greasy. This is not right. Darkness fell and turned my hands into shadowy silhouettes. A sense of urgency gripped me. I hurried to the tower and threw open the doors. Where are you? Endless empty halls echoed my question. At the far end, I thought I saw a figure disappearing into the dark. Hey, wait! I ran after them, feet pounding the sticky, wet stones, echoing loudly. Wait! What was their name again? I, I can't remember. Why can't I remember? It's getting old. <laughs> Hardly surprising. What? I came to a jolting halt and looked around. Who said that? When will you start taking some responsibility? My skin crawled. I turned and bolted as fast as I could. I came to the end of the hallway, grabbed the slippery doorknob, and barged into the empty oh, into the room empty. Another door, nothing. I ran, trembling fingers across through my hair, nails digging into my scalp, then shuddered upon seeing the sticky redness smeared everywhere. I wiped my hands and the clothes over and over, harder and harder. It wouldn't come off. Teeth clenched, I pushed through yet another door. Look at you, covered in filth. Chasing another childish fancy. Have you no shame? I'm sorry, my voice echoed back as I stood in an empty room. No windows, no doors. Hot breaths, wraps in my throat. My legs trembled. I was terrified, exhausted. Why was I running so hard? Why was I struggling? It was alright, I was making progress. That was the only thing that mattered. Eyelids heavy, comforting numbness enveloped me. I closed my eyes and sank down, down, down. I would rest just for a moment. I would finish this. The seas in every direction, endless, a diamond dusting of blue light across the surface above me. I looked down into the depth, a pressure against my chest as the darkness stirs. A star, then two, then a constellation of them glitter in light. They approach. The darkness was not the bottomless sea, but the body of an enormous fish, its silhouette filling my entire view. A gaping mouth was open from horizon to horizon, a deeper black within, approaching, buzzing. The progenitor fish, truthful, comes for me. I should be afraid. Her mouth, now an all-encompassing, now all-encompassing, blasts out the last remainder of feeble illumination around me. I should be afraid? Why am I not? The mouth shuts with a distinct distant clang, flash of lightning. Pricking light in the comforting darkness, a rumbling rises and falls like the waves washing the shore. 
Calm coolness gives way to crushing heat. A blanket of boulders smothers me. Hey, are you all right? Do you hear me? My eyes struggle open to a face. Oh no, go away. <laughs> Someone grips my shoulders and squeezes. Still a bit out of it, eh? That metallic and greasy buzzing sound crescendos and my mouth tastes of iron. Then a hand is laid upon my forehead. I open my eyes again. It's easier this time, but the rest of my body is still heavy as stones. I can't budge a hair. Mm, feverish, but no obvious wounds. We'll be fine. Something went wrong. We don't have much time. My tongue feels half heavy and stiff. Wrong. I snap my mouth. This is embarrassing. Mm, maybe you should stay put for now. I'll see what I can do. Hey, wait. What's happening? They turn and stride off, and look around, trying to get a hold of my surroundings. I must be dizzy still, and everything's spinning. Why are the books flying? I squeeze my eyes shut again. This is not happening. I'll wake up soon. Sound trickles in, rustling, clinking, a storm raging outside, a guttural buzzing. How can I sleep like this? Annoyed, I drag myself, slung sheet to my feet. An urge to gag rises, rubbing my throbbing temples, tasting a foulness in my mouth. I force down the vial. What did I do last night? That incessant buzzing. I rub my eyes again and look for the source of the sound. As I catch sight of it, a cold terror creeps up my spine. A pulsing, churning thing is hovering in the room, like space is swallowing itself. As I catch sight of it, a cold terror creeps up my spine. I read that already. Waves of moist, brilliant heat spew from it. The transparency, the symmetry, the stench, the singing. What in Laura's name is this? Shapes huddle beneath the gross tick, grotesque thing in the air. As I step around to get a better look, they resolve into figures, midnight silent and still as bones. The white-haired stranger who woke me earlier stands still. Someone else is curled up on the floor, their face a mask of anguish. The emblem of a high magus hangs around their neck. The image of an eel coils around their arm. Why do I know these symbols? White hair's hands are raised in a peculiar Gesture. Gesture? <laughs> I have trouble pronouncing this word. Toward the vortex looking ahead. I always forget how to pronounce it. Hey, what are you doing? What is that thing? It looks like they are frozen in place. Hello. No movement. Hello. You have mail. I bump into something and look down. A couch and a table. Cups lay about like drunkards on the varnished wood. An inkwell. Quills and crumpled papers litter the area. Dark red spots spill from open bottles splatter across the mosaic stone floor. A crash in the cavernous chamber pierces the silence. I duck behind the couch, heart pounding fast. There comes a bang, the sound of glass shattering, shouting. A cacophony reverberates painfully from the walls around me. I clutch my ears. A struggle? Please let me wake up already. This is not funny anymore. As abruptly as they came, the sounds die down. Is it over? Clamping my eyes shut, I try to black out the buzzing. Let this be over soon, let this be over soon, let this... Feeling better, I nearly jumped at the voice. The stranger is back, slumped next to the couch, head lulled, a hand to the shoulder, breath shallow. I turn and see the same stranger standing under the vortex and my mouth hangs open. Why, why are there two of you? I almost bite my tongue when something drips from their clutched shoulder. The glistening fluid shimmers and evaporates after it hits the floor. You are melting. I back away a step. What's wrong with you? They try to speak but wince instead. Eyes closed, throat bobbing. Spitting out something black and then resting their head back, they flash a sly grin and whisper, melting. Very funny. I wrinkle my nose. What do you mean? What is happening here? What does it look like? I glance around the room with a scowl, taking care to avoid the floating thing. Like the end of the world? Another wince. They lift a finger and point. What about that? Do you recognize it? I realize they mean the vortex and avert my eyes. No, Davarna, no. Should I? I can't resist the shudder. The person stares at me for a few breaths and then bursts into laughter. Um, I glance at the ghastly vortex, profoundly confused with the situation. They are still laughing. Shouldn't you do something about that thing? That thing is the abyss, Davara, the door to eternal torment. They brush off hair from their forehead. You really don't remember. I scowl at them and dodge a flying book. You still have not told me why there are two of you, and what about that person on the ground? 
They look from me to the lying person and back and start chuckling again, shaking their head. That is you. A great magus. Magus? Magus? Maggots. <laughs> Farseer, saver of the Darn Square, prodigy of the age, so on and so forth. A failure or fraud. Tell me at least you remember your name. My name is Vin Diesel. <laughs> the words tickle at the inside of my head. Magus. Vin. Is it Magus or Magus? It's Magus, right? Like mage. They nod with an easy smile, murmuring. Not a slight to a, not to slight a dire situation, but what a time to lose your memories. It's almost amusing in a way. Amusing. Excuse me if I don't feel like laughing. Why should I believe you that I am this person over there? How is that even possible? The stranger shakes their head and chuckles, then tilts their head limply towards an ornate mirror meandering through the air nearby. Easier if you go see yourself. If you go see yourself. I roll my eyes and step over to the mirror. Show me how I look pre-made. So you can you can pick um, to see this or not see it. I I don't really care if this is how I look. It doesn't really impact the story to see the picture. What I see leaves me stunned. The me in the mirror is a spitting image of the person on the floor. I turn and stare wide-eyed, then look at the mirror again. Every last detail, down to the piercing, which I'm only now noticing, all identical. And just for a breath, the eel on my arm seems to wiggle, but I blink and it's still again. I feel lightheaded. This is not right. But how? How am I in two places at once? Are we dead? Is this the afterlife? And why do you know things when I don't? How is this fair? And just who are you? They laugh soundlessly. You don't remember me either? You're... <laughs> Mr. Poo Poo Head. <laughs> Another fit of coughing. Not even close. You must have hit your head quite severely. Or right, I run a hand over my scalp. There aren't any holes. I don't remember hitting it. But that's just how it would be if I did hit it, isn't it? Hmm, how shall I see this? Eyes closed and lips parted. Your voice is barely a whisper now. The name is Ilar, your partner. Don't know what you did. Found you like this. They push the words out with effort. I lean closer to listen. A ritual must have gone astray and set loose the abyss of our uh, stripping away your memories. I did what I could and conjured your heart vessel with my waters. You'd be gone otherwise. They grimace then fall silent. I nudge them. Heart vessel? Abyss? Hey, keep talking. They open their eyes again and struggle to point toward the other side of the room, but it flops to the floor. Sink me. They're getting so quiet I have to put my ear next to their mouth to hear them. One breath tickles me. I can almost hear my blood rushing. Your desk. Look in your journal. Find the spell. Circular gate. Black powder mantra. The only way to save. Now. No time. Go. Quit. <laughs> and then they slump. Holding my breath, I wait. Heartbeat like a hammer in my skull. Thump. Um, the buzzing fills the whippy silence in between resonance of torment. I drive a thumb into my temple, crushing one pain with another. A futile effort. Hey, are you alive? I reach a hand to their shoulder. My hand passes through them and I jerk away. My skin crawls at the sickening sensation. Their body melts into a sticky, shimmering puddle in just a few breaths. Trembling back, I, laid on my, I land on my butt and clamp my mouth shut to hold in the panic. The ruckus from earlier. There are footsteps, a voice, scrambling. Someone else was definitely here. When nothing happens for a while, I allow myself to breathe again through shaking fingers. If they would hurt me, they would have done it while I was asleep, right? And if Ilara was the only thing stopping them, but now they're gone and you are useless. It's fine. I, if I'm careful, I can find a way to... Or to Varna, find a spell. Something is wrong with all this. And how does someone just melt? Never mind that now, I just can't sit here. Okay, let's go search the journal. Okay, I'm going to stop reading now because my, my throat is sore. <laughs> Y'all can read.
Okay, so we find the journal. Hello, journal, my old friend. Okay, we're looking for something. It's there's just too much information though, right? And then there's something there. The cat person. And then I try to grab a knife and it starts talking. Listen to it. Did the knife kill me? I failed to listen to the knife <laughs> the first time through. And then and then you just threw it away. Oh no, please. Where am I? What happened? How did I end up here? Why don't I know anything? Hmm. Did I actually die? <laughs> okay, we can call it there. We can call it there. Interesting. I, uh... Yeah, you're supposed to not listen to the knife, but I was... I was curious as to what would happen if I did, and apparently you just die. Uh, if you don't listen to the knife, you throw it away, and then, um... Ilar comes to save you, because he was faking his own death, to draw out the creature, and the creature hunts down people who are vulnerable, and then they tell you that, you know, there's something wrong with the, with this guy was casting a spell and stuff, and he has to look in the journal, and only he can open the journal, if anyone else looks at it or tries to move it, stuff happens, they don't explain what, so you're trying to go through and regain your memories, and find a solution to this. Anyways, there you have it. Chronicles of Tal done. The remainder developed and published by Square Weasel Studio out now on the PC and MSR piece 1999. Hopefully that gave you guys an idea of what the game is like and hopefully you enjoyed what you saw. If you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see or for me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. And I'll catch you guys next time. I have a few more days in Oregon, but after that I'll be going back to Chicago and then I can finally have my desktop set up. But I am going to have to move all of that eventually. I'm going to drive across from Chicago to, to Oregon, which is going to be... Uh, it's not, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> but yeah, and after that I'll be set up at my grandma's house while we look for a house to buy. Um, the housing market is really insane here. I don't know how anyone's supposed to... Afford housing here. Um, anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>